Hello and welcome to this presentation, Creativity in English Education, What the Recent Research Tells Us. My name is Stuart Gray. My name is Roxia B. Thank you for coming. And here we are. Hello. Hello. Roxy and I are both English teachers in South Korea, and we're both very interested in creative language practice activities. And in this presentation, we're going to share what we have found by reading those literature in creativity and English education. Yes, we've been doing a lot of reading recently um, about creativity, and this presentation is for us to share what we found, the trends in there. And it should be interesting to any English teachers who might want to incorporate creativity into their classes, or perhaps just more so than they already are. So we have done a literature review about creativity for this presentation. Yes, we have uh, searched creativity and English education in the online library, including scholars and widely online library. Yes. And so far for this review, we've read about 40 papers. And um, we're not going to include all of those papers in this presentation. We've just selected a few that we think highlight some of the more important trends in this field. Um, and these are papers mainly from about 2015 to 2020, though we have included some older papers as well, where we thought that was appropriate. So having done this reading, there are certain questions that we hope to offer answers to from the reading uh, related to creativity and English education. And these questions are as follows. Definition of creativity. We should know what it is if we're going to be working with it in our teaching. And what does creativity mean for teachers and students of English? Why should we care about creativity as teachers? Can creativity be fostered? Or can a teacher make students be more creative than they would be without the teacher's help? How can English teachers encourage their students to be creative while learning English? Or what sorts of activities are most appropriate for encouraging creativity in English classes? Does encouraging students to be creative improve their English? A very important question. Is there any evidence that educating students using creative activities leads them to become better at English than they would using other types of activities? So having done a lot of reading, uh, we're going to offer some of the answers to these questions that we've found. And so let's start at the beginning. The first question, what is creativity? And based on our reading, there is more than one way to answer that question, isn't there? When we say a creative person, we often think about creative ability. Yes, um, there are skills that creative people have. Um, and there are four in particular that come up a lot in the literature. First, fluency how many ideas you can produce in a given time. Second, flexibility. How various your ideas are. Third, originality. How new your ideas are. Fourth, elaboration. How much detail you put into your ideas. So these are four skills commonly attributed to creative people. And this has been used to test creativity as a Torrance test. Yes, the Torrance test of creativity is the perhaps the most popular test of creative ability and it tests these four things. As a teacher, uh, this gives us one place to start. If we want to encourage students to be creative, we can ask them to use these four skills like produce many ideas, make sure your ideas are detailed. A classic example of an activity that draws on these four skills is this one. Think of as many uses for a paperclip as you can. So this kind of activity, if given to students, can encourage them to use these creative skills. Um, but there's another angle on creativity besides the, the person and their skills. There's another perspective, isn't there? Yes, when we uh, see a product, an outcome, then we say this is creative. 
a creative idea or a creative product, yes. Uh, we can focus not on the person being creative, but on what they create. And we can assess that. We can encourage them to come up with creative ideas. And when we assess creative ideas, there are two main criteria that we use. Novelty and appropriateness. Uh, with appropriateness in this case, meaning how, how it suits the goal um, of its creation. An example of a creative product focused activity for a class might be design a new type of car. You get the students to design a car and then you can assess the product itself. How new is their idea relative to other cars and how useful do you think this will be as a car? So that's another perspective. Either you can focus on the skills of the student and design your activities to encourage them to use those skills, or you can focus on the end product. Identify what you want them to make and design your activities to ensure that they come up with something new and suitable in that way. So that's creativity in general. But of course, we're all English teachers, and so we might ask, well, what does creativity mean for us? Why should we care about it? And we're going to answer specifically for the Korean context, though it, the answer may apply more broadly. Uh, what does it mean for us? Based on our reading, it means at least three things. It means for teachers, new demands, new challenges, and new possibilities. Uh, and there is a lot of demand for creativity these days, isn't there? There has been a huge emphasis on creativity in Korean education. Hmm. The government is pushing it in all the subject areas, including English. Um, they have started to see it as an essential skill for students to develop. And also the government commissioned a report on creativity in education with some interesting results. Yes, a creative education engages learners very well. Hmm. And so, for these reasons, the government is demanding that English teachers teach creatively. All teachers in schools, uh, but English teachers as well. So that is the demand on us. Um, but also, creativity is a challenge for us. Um, based on our reading, we found a lot of teachers struggle uh, with creativity. Even though the government, they have made a national curriculum, uh, creativity as a core uh, concept. In a curriculum, yet English teachers, a very few of English teachers, use creative activities. Yes, um, even though the public school English textbooks in Korea now include a lot of creative activities, the government's report showed that among 11 subject areas, English class involved the fewest creative activities, uh, which surprised me, I've got to be honest. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Sorry. Why not? Because often when we say creative activities, a uh, teacher might say, you just teach English. Yes, there is that. Um, a lot of teachers might question what it has to do with what they're trying to achieve. Uh, because English education in Korea is still mostly accuracy focused. No wonder that is a very test oriented system. It is. And in such a system, it is difficult perhaps to find space for students to express themselves creatively. Uh, so it's understandable then that creativity is a challenge for teachers, um, but there are also a lot of possibilities for creativity in the English class. As we have found in our reading, a lot of people believe English class is the perfect place to do creativity. Because language learning is a creative process. Mm. Yes, when students learn languages and they recombine the languages in their own brain and they respond creatively using the language in communicative situations. It's a creative process. And indeed, a lot of classic language practice activities are creative in nature. Yeah, for example, like in comics or storytelling, those can be very, very creative. Definitely. So although the demand is high and it can be challenging in our classrooms to incorporate creativity, there are also a lot of possibilities um, suggested in the literature. Um, so it's possible. But then the next question is, can creativity be fostered? Can a teacher make a student more creative than they would be without the teacher's help? And based on our reading, uh, we would say that the answer is 
that creativity can be enhanced by a teacher's intervention. But that is not the same as saying that a teacher can make a student into a more creative person. Because it's a lot about the personality and intelligence. Yeah, and so it's linked to these natural qualities. And there is evidence that some students need less guidance to be creative than others. And if it is an organic ability, then maybe it's not something we can really influence. On the other hand, there is a lot of literature saying that we can have a positive influence on students' creativity. A teacher's guidance can improve creative outcomes and narrow the gap between higher and lower creativity students. Yes. So even if uh, it's questionable whether we can teach students to be more creative people, lots of literature is arguing that if the teacher guides the students, you get more creative results, at least. Now, the, the literature also suggests several forms that this guidance can take. Direct student to discover appropriate solutions. Yeah, give them hints. Hey, why don't you think about this? Have you looked at this? That kind of guidance does um, have the potential to improve creative results. And also you can give students a structured mind mapping activity. Structured activities in general, um, a lot of literature argues that they're very useful. Because r rather than just saying to students, make something or think of something, if we give them a step-by-step -step process, if we break it down, in step one, try to think about this idea, and in step two, try to change the idea like that, breaking it down into steps makes it less burdensome on students' cognition. Uh, so the results, creatively, are better for that reason. And there are other things that a teacher can do, of course. Yeah, you should make clear that the creativity is the goal. Mm. If students know they need to be creative, they produce more creative results. I think that's quite reasonable. Um, and, of course, giving positive feedback is very useful as well. Yes, when they get a positive and constructive feedback, then they would likely do more of that. Whereas if you shut them down, um, it can stifle creativity. So these are some behaviors on the part of a teacher that can enhance a student's creativity, at least in terms of the outcomes of their creative thinking. So that's a positive overall view of it. Teachers can help students to be more creative. Uh, so then the next question is, oh, how? And how can English teachers encourage their student to be creative while learning English? Yes, what kinds of particular classroom activities are most suitable for this? And um, Lee and Park had an interesting study. They actually surveyed elementary kids directly and asked them what kind of activities that they wanted to see more of in English class. And this is what they came up with. Yeah, they liked the games the most. And the second, cultural education. The third, role plays. Collaborative activities. And pop song, movies, animations. And these are all very popular to those 601 elementary students yes. in the survey. Hmm. So the students are calling for these activities to be included. It's understandable why. Everyone likes games. Uh, but there's a lot of scope in here for creativity, especially with things like role plays and all this culture and movies and whatnot. There's a lot of scope to use this as an opportunity for students to be creative. Designer games. Indeed. The students can design games themselves, or we can design games in which students are called on to be creative. So that's the student's own perspective on it. Um, but of course, the teacher's also have a perspective on what creative activities can be helpful for English class, such as these. Rhymes, alliterations, riddles, inventing new words, metaphor. Thank you for reading that. I it was hard. <laughs> and so, but these particular creative activities are very suitable for language classes, aren't they? Yes. Uh, it's, it's an activity based on the language. Yes. That's the first thing. And the next thing is, a uh, student can play with the language. There's no right answer. Yes, there is no right answer, and they can play with the language itself. So they're engaged with the language while they create something like a rhyme or a riddle. Uh, of course, a classic example of an activity 
where students play with the language to create something is a poem. And there's quite a bit of literature on poems with EFL learners, even very young ones, and it's very positive about the benefits of poetry. Pattern poem helps students to acquire vocabulary, develops flexible thinking, and create new words. <laughs> Again, excellent reading there. So uh, can you tell us what a pattern poem is? Poem with patterns? <laughs> That's correct. That is exactly correct. Um, so a pattern poem is um, a poem that has a pre-given structure. Like an example is an acrostic, where you take a word and you have to make a sentence from each letter of that word to make a poem. And the pattern itself gives students a structure to follow and so supports them as they create their poem. So there's a lot of literature saying that pattern poems are an excellent creative English practice activity. There is an article by Michael Free um, about using Shijo, the Korean pattern poem, the traditional poem, with secondary students. Michael Free, by the way, the chair of this conference. So if you see him, ask him about his poetry article. It's an excellent piece of writing. Uh, so poetry and similar activities are very appropriate for English class because the students get to play with the language. And uh, so activities like that are very helpful. But you don't need necessarily to use one of those, like rhymes or poems. You can make an activity for students just beginning from whatever target language you want them to practice. And Roxy is very good at this. Uh, here's a picture from one of Roxy's classes. Can you tell us what this is? Uh, in this activity, um, the target language was asking directions. Go straight, turn left, stuff like yes, that. Yes, and a student created their future town in group. Future town? Yes. What does that mean? Uh, I designate a time like 10 years later. Ah, imagine a town 10 years in the future and make a 3D map of it? Yes, and, then and they, they have presented in English. Ah, so in this way you got them to, use, to practice this quite simple language uh, in an imaginative way by creating a new town and then describing it. So it, that's a great example of just beginning with the target language and building a creative activity up from there. And we have another example from your class as well. Can you tell us what this is? Uh, this is a, making an inspirational poster. And the target expression was uh, can do or cannot do or do or don't. Mm. And it's an inspirational poster. Yes. So the students made this to inspire each other. And the next generation or next uh, people who's <laughs> going to use the classroom, yes. Because you put it up on the walls, right? Yes, true. Yeah. So that's another example of just taking whatever the target language is and encouraging students to make something with it. So that's an option that teachers have as well. You can use sort of pre-established activities like rhymes or poems, or you can take whatever language you have and just imagine some way that students can create something with it. There's a lot of scope. Whatever your curriculum is, um, there are creative ways to play with it, arguably. But then there's the final question for this presentation here. Does encouraging students to be creative improve their English? This is a tough question. It is a tough one. And again, this is a literature review presentation. We tried to find the answer. The truth is the literature on this is a bit deficient. Does it really help them to improve their English? And the answer we have is there are various arguments about this in the literature, various arguments such as this one, for example. It is harder to produce ideas and make connections while negotiating a foreign language. And arguably that would be an argument against including um, creative activities in class. It's just harder to be creative in a foreign language. So that would be a negative argument. There are some positive arguments, like this one, for example. Creative education is engaging and improves students' motivation and self-esteem. And if we believe that engagement and motivation and self-esteem lead to superior outcomes in English learning, then that would be an argument for including creativity in our classes, but it's a very indirect argument. Uh, very indirect. It doesn't really say anything about English specifically. 
it's worth keeping in mind. As for English specifically, there are some arguments as well, such as this one. Higher levels of creativity have been linked to better EFL writing achievement. Again, ambiguous though. Uh, just because students have tested high on creativity scales and they write well, doesn't necessarily mean that if we encourage creativity, um, they're going to write better. Uh, so that's ambiguous. It's a positive argument, but again, a bit uncertain. Uh, but one of our favorite arguments is actually this one. So, I agree with this. Think, Playful yeah. and creative language activities encourage a student to attend to both the form and the meaning of the language. I think we both agree with this one, yeah. Um, by encouraging them to play with the language and to create something with it, you, you're giving them a task which will require them to look at the language, understand what it means, and also how it's formed. Especially things like rhymes and poems require attention to form. So that kind of activity can be very appropriate for engaging students with the language, both in meaning and form. And we believe that. But it's, it's just a case to be made. As far as we can tell, there hasn't been a paper written yet demonstrating that students in creative classrooms learn better English. We may have missed it, or maybe that doesn't exist yet. For now, um, there are only arguments for it, and uh, we think they're pretty convincing. Uh, we certainly think it's worth an English teacher's time to include creative activities on the basis of these arguments, but it remains uncertain what the results will be. So. That was all five of our questions. And with that, we have just our quick concluding remarks here. And uh, so, yeah, uh, based on what we've gone over in the literature, there is demand for creativity in English education, for example, from the Korean government. Uh, but it can be challenging to include creativity in EFL classes, certainly. You might think to make a creative person is impossible, mm. but then you can approach to a, making a creative product in a classroom. Hmm. Yeah, if you focus more on what the students are going to create, something novel and something appropriate, and just focus on the product, that's some, perhaps a more realistic philosophy than trying to cultivate creativity in the person. Um, and as we've shown from the literature, um, there's a lot of evidence that teachers can help students to be more creative. And there are also many suitable creative activities for English classes. So for those reasons, we do think that creativity is something we can recommend for English teachers. Uh, there's a lot of scope for its inclusion. And Roxy's done a lot of work with creative activities. Uh, may I make a final note then? Of course you may. <laughs> you, you're, <laughs> you're completely free to do that. <laughs> Please do, yes. Uh, so uh, maybe you can approach from the stage of making a creative, creative products, but I believe that's the way that you can pave a way for a student to be creative, a person. Ah, so by having them come up with poems or 3D maps or riddles or whatever, yeah, by just giving them the chance to make those products, you may be cultivating something internally. You. In the, in the long run, yes. Well, we can certainly hope so. So, that is what we have for you today. Thank you very much for coming. The references we've used throughout this presentation are available at this link on the screen now and also at the QR code. Um, if you'd like to read this literature for yourself, we do recommend it. Um, particularly Michael Free's paper on Shijo is a very good one, very accessible. If you'd like to try out some poems in your class, that's a very good place to start. And of course, we are happy to answer any questions you may have. Our emails are on the screen now. So thank you very much again for coming, and we hope this was interesting for you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Goodbye.